Do you want to walk in true power? Hallelujah. Oh, my Jesus. Sunday. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to crucify that flesh. I want you to die to yourself. Let, let, let your will not be your will. Let your will be the will of God for your life. To walk in the full measure of the power and the grace that you've been appointed to. Now, there's some people out there that said that will say that it doesn't take all of this. But you but when you examine our lives carefully, they ain't got no power. That's just the bottom line. I mean, now maybe you can find some that do, but I also take that with a grain of salt too, because if a person's point of reference is not seeing a lot, they could think anybody is walking with power and authority. But I know from from 30 something years of salvation and ministry, that's not the case. That's just the way it is. It takes all of that and then some to be everything you need to be in God. And this goes beyond religion, beloved. It goes beyond just church affiliation. Hallelujah. Now, Brent and I, we are firm believers in being able to have quality time for everything. That includes family. That includes a lot of different things. And we and we and we set things up that way people can can walk the abundant life. But Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Serving God is not as hard as it is. It's hard on the flesh, really, because we by nature in the flesh desire things that are not good for us. Just like I told you before, there's, there's times I've not wanted to do stuff, but in the process of doing it, God has blessed me because God knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. So, the funniest thing you could ever do is give your plans to God. Hallelujah. That's the funniest thing you could do. Like you really know what you need. And many people have a desire to do a lot of things, but as much of it is based upon selfishness. And many people are not trained to learn how to hear the voice of God and to be directed by God concerning their life's choices. So when stuff blows up in their face, many times some of these same people, they blame God for that, but God didn't have anything to do with what they did in the first place. All right, so let's tie this together in a nice little boat. Let's go to Acts chapter 19. We want you to understand the power of release. And this is one of the reasons why you need to spend time in fasting and prayer because you carry a very powerful anointing that has to be released. Now, we've talked about this before, but we're going to take a, take a different dimension on this. Acts chapter 19, verse number 11. It says, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. That's important. So that from his body, were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and diseases departed from them and evil spirits went out of them. That's powerful. Think about this. A transfer of anointing to a dumb object can drive evil spirits out of somebody. That's the type of power that we possess. Listen, if you're not walking in that type of power, you can. Oh my Jesus, you can't do that. Hallelujah. You need to take some time and be reacquainted with the covenant that God has given us. We've taken the time over the years to have had to deal with demonic activity and all different types of stuff. We have countless testimonies of people getting healed of diseases. And there was a time, like I said, this, there was a time years ago when we was kind of first starting our ministry. And when we was in Dallas, we was at Carrollton at the time. Well, North Dallas. Hallelujah. That, that area. There was a gentleman that was having problems with a lust spirit, and he was dealing with some things that every time he was around people that operated in the presence of God, something would roll around in his stomach, and, and it would just start to manifest. So we talked about this. He wanted deliverance, so we took the time, and um, he didn't want to come to our house, strange enough, but like, really? Okay, so we went... <laughs> To where he went to church at this time, like I said, we was all part of the same church at one time, Covenant Church. So he wanted to be prayed for. They had what they call an amp theater up there. 
So we went up there and prayed. Now, now check this out. This is a funny story. Brenda didn't go with me. I went with him up there and we went into the, the um, we, we went into this, this amphitheater type place over there in, that behind the cafe and stuff like that. And we started to pray. Now, there was nobody in there at the time. I, I had to be on guard for one particular security guard who act like he had failed his um, entrance exam to the police academy. He was one of those type that took his job as a security guard to another dimension. He was one of those wannabe policemen that really, <laughs> listen, he failed his exam. He must have because I had I had a few run-ins where I had, I had one particular run-in with him and it wasn't a good experience. Now, a, a lot of his other security guards, they, they wouldn't have tripped about what he did, but but he, he took his job to another dimension. So, I didn't want to run into him while we was doing deliverance. So we took the time. We went in, 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 into, it was like an auditorium type situation. We went and started praying, spoke over him. He fell to the ground and started bawling up like a snake and writhing and stuff like that and started spitting stuff up. He, he started foaming at the mouth and spitting stuff up, coughing stuff up. Now check this out. I'm looking at him and I'm looking at the door to make sure Robocop didn't come or anybody else like that because then they would have, they would have, some of them would have been okay, but he would have kicked us out. So, so I'm taking the time to pray over him and he's starting to spit stuff up and cough stuff up and I'm taking authority and Brenda's at the house praying. Hallelujah. So we're taking the time and taking authority over this demonic I mean, action that was going on in him. So as he was coughing this stuff up, it came to a point where I got him up to his feet and brought him to the bathroom. There was a bathroom that was located behind the amphitheater in there. And as and then he went into one of the stalls and started to continue to keep spitting stuff up. So as I'm in there, um, the accountant for Covenant Church, the one who handles all the finance, happened to walk in. So he's in there spitting the stuff up after prayer. The, the, the accounting, he's he's handling his business. He's looking at me. I'm greeting him. We're saying hi and stuff like that. He asked me if everything's okay. I say everything's okay. And that was the end of that. <laughs> so he left. We finished. The young man got set free. Oh my Jesus, he got set free. He didn't have any more of that rumbling in his stomach when he was around people with the presence of God. And he was delivered from that situation. I checked on him going, and from and like I said, this is going back a few years ago. From the time I checked on him again, he was totally set free. That's powerful, y'all. Listen, this is how it is. We have the power of the Holy Ghost. He crawled by my son, the love of my kid. He didn't have any more of that moving around in his stomach. And, and from, from his own words, he was free from that spirit. That was his words. Oh, my Jesus. Now, I need to tell you that when people get free, they need to stay free. Because the reason why things happen is because people open doors in the first place. And it's very much possible for a person to get delivered. And then they don't shut them. They, they, they need to stay free from the stuff that got them in, in problems in the first place. So we're taking the time to do some teaching here. We shut those doors and we want to encourage people that when they get delivered, that they stay delivered, that they go somewhere where somebody got some power. That's just the bottom line. You need to be somewhere where somebody got some power. But listen, you guys, this is real. This is word now. This is real, you guys. You need to be, you stay out of places that, that, that you ain't got no business doing. Shut those doors. But I, I just deviated for a minute. But we have power. The power that God's given us has the ability to be transferred from us. And we don't have to be in a physical location. What God has given us can be can be transferred and, and it can be released and can bring deliverances in other places. You need to understand that. Even with our videos, we understand the power of transformation and impartation. So we declare that over your life right now. Now, for, hallelujah. We're on a different plane now. God has spoken some things differently. I declare right now that you're blessed in the city, that you're blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out, that you are the head and not the tail, that you're above only and not beneath. Now, remember, Deuteronomy 28 says those are promises, but the criteria is that we have to diligently obey the voice of the Lord. Be blessed, everybody. We declare God's bless. Oh, God, hey, God, hallelujah. We want you to have a blessed time and the Holy Ghost will be talking to you again real soon. Hey, oh, God, I feel the presence of God. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. We seal this word right now that not one word 
falls to the ground in Jesus' name. Walk in heaven on earth. Be blessed. We'll be talking to you again real soon. Hallelujah. Thank you.